So now that we have uh, Cloud9 open, um, I'm not going to type in the examples here. Um, we're just going to go through them line by line. <clears throat> so the first program we're going to look at is for task one, Lincoln LED. We've already hooked up the LED to our breadboard. Um, so if you look at the first line here, what that's saying is to um, include the bone script library into our program here. If you're an Arduino programmer, um, you're used to at the top of your program having include statements for the libraries you're using, so this is similar to that. Um, the next line is that we're um, showing uh, which line, which pin we're going to use for LED. So we already hooked up our um, our, our uh, pin, our LED to pin um, 14 on the P9 header. Um, so we have to tell the program where that is. Um, the next variable there is state, and we're just going to use that to keep track of the state of pin 14, so that we can turn the LED on and off. Um, and the next mode, or the next pin, the next line is pin mode. So this will be familiar also for Arduino programmers. Um, what this is doing is saying for that LED pin, let's make it an output. So you have to, for each pin, tell it if you want to use it as an input, such as a switch or a button or as an output, like an LED. So in this case, we have output since we want to control the um, LED. Um, and you notice up there at the top it says var next to all the variables. If you're an Arduino programmer, you're probably used to declaring the type of your variables. In JavaScript, you don't have to declare them. Um, you can just um, use just use it whatever however you want, and it figures out the type. Um, the next line there is probably going to be the thing that's most um, unusual to Arduino programmers. Um, instead of having a setup function and a loop function um, that just loop just runs through your, your whole program in Arduino, what we're going to have here is we're going to call set interval, and that's going to call the function blink every 100 milliseconds. So instead of having uh, uh, turning on the LED, delaying for 100 milliseconds, turning off the LED in a uh, big loop, we just tell set interval to call blink every 100 milliseconds. Um, so that's a callback, and that's um, this event-driven event model of programming that I spoke about before. Um, so set interval is going to then call blink every 100 milliseconds, and if we look at the function blink, all that's going to do is take state, so let's pretend, so if we're, first time we run this program, state's going to be zero, um, and the exclamation mark means not, so it inverts the value. So um, not zero will be one, so state will then be assigned one, and then with analog write, which you should be familiar with if you've done Arduino programming, that's an output statement, so that means we're going to set the LED to the state. Um, and we'll get to analog write in a little bit more detail later on in the next lessons. Um, so all this is doing here is um, if the state is zero, we're going to make it a one, and then we're going to set the LED to that state. Um, so if we set the LED state to one, that means that the pin's going to go high, pin 14 is going to go high, and current's going to flow through our circuit and light up the LED. So the way you run your program here in Cloud9 is by clicking on the run button here up at the top. So let me go ahead and do that. And we should now see our LED, and it's blinking every 100 milliseconds. So just to show you how easy it is to change a program, we don't have to do any compiling or anything like that. I just click stop to stop it running, and I can just go in here, and I can edit that line and change. Let's change 100 to something a little bit slower. So if we change it to 500, that's 500 milliseconds or half a second. So it's going to turn on and off every half second. If I go back up here to, well, first let me go ahead and go to File, Save, to save the, to save the program, and then I'm going to click on Run, and now we're now going to see the LED is going to blink slower. It's going to be on for half a second and off for half a second. So we're now going to move on to our next task here, which uh, builds upon this blink LED task. In this case, we're going to add a button into the mix, so that when we press the button, the LED goes on. And when the, LED, when the button's not pressed, the LED is going to turn off. So I'm going to have to grab a couple extra components, and I'll be right back.